County Council. Sorry, and uh, Martina Toffey. Martina works with us uh, as our uh, administrative officer. In the <laughs> so, um, I suppose just to, I suppose a few things, maybe just to, to start with, maybe if everyone could uh, mute just while we're we're doing the session this morning, just to make sure that we don't have any kind of background noise, that would be great. And uh, feel free to either turn off your cameras or keep your cameras on. You're you're very welcome to do either. So, um. So what we wanted to do today is just to introduce you to the, the scheme, uh, to tell you a little bit about it and to give you information in terms of how to access the scheme in 2022. So this is the, the second year of the Minor Tourism Works Grant Scheme, uh, and it was initiated uh, by Donegal County Council in 2021. And the scheme has been set up to support communities all over Donegal to undertake works that will help enhance the tourism appeal of their area. So in 2021, we uh, funded 29 community-based projects from all over Donegal to the value of €250,000 and an additional €250,000 was also spent by council services undertaking similar types of works uh, in various locations. And these works included things like improving access to uh, popular sites, um, facilitating car parking spaces, easing congestion in areas that, that really have become quite popular over the last few years. So all in all, in 2021, we, we spent €500,000 under the scheme and it was all around enhancing the tourism appeal of, of the area for, for visitors coming into Donegal. So this year we have a further call for the scheme and it's currently open at the minute and we have another €250,000 to allocate to community-based groups all around Donegal for this type of work and it's all about how a community group can undertake works that will enhance the, the tourism appeal of their area. So it's minor works, we're, we're looking at you know fairly small scale projects in the region of five to €20,000. Uh, and what we'll do this morning is Barney McLaughlin is with us as I, as I mentioned and Barney's going to do a presentation on the details of the scheme and then we'll have an opportunity for questions and answers following the scheme, or sorry, following uh, Barney's presentation. So, uh, and again, if you have any questions as well that you'd like uh, us to deal with, please feel free to type them into the chat function, and we'll go through these after Barney's presentation. So without any further ado, I'll, I'll just hand you over to Barney for this morning's presentation. Thanks very much, everyone. Okay, folks, good morning. I'm going to quick, I'm going to, not going to quickly go through it. I'm going to go, go through the, the guidelines and the application process of the scheme. As Anne Marie has already outlined, this is the second year of it. So uh, some of you would be familiar with it because some of you probably have applied in the, uh, the last year. And uh, last year was a learning curve for, for all of us. And we've, we've, we've learned some things out of it and some things we've hoped we've We've tried to short circuit some things we've tried to change and uh, the changes we've made we hope we've made for the better so just to make you aware of what of what of what we've done or what we've tried to do to make things better for you and how you apply we've learned that the process and that was because we've learned what we learned last year was how why we need to learn learn the process uh, the application is a uh, process starts as we said uh, you have up until uh, the 6th of June to submit your application. And then the application this time around, last year we asked that you would have three quotes, but we all know that things have changed in the, in the world because the quotation you get today is no longer valid next week because prices are going up dramatically. But we do ask that when you go out and get a quotation now, that you get a quotation that you know it's going to roughly cost what the, what the project you're going to do is going to cost. Because whenever you're going to get the works done, you're going to need to know roughly what it's going to cost you to do them works. So that happen, that's going to go in. You're going to have to get a price that's going to stand to what, what the works are going to roughly cost you to do. Because when you submit your bills, and you are going to have to submit the invoices with your bills, that they're the, they're, the, they're the prices that we're going to be paying out as to what are your hard costs. So you're going to have to get invoices for all the works done. So that's where that's where the that's where your, your costs are going to have to stand is what you paid for to get works done. Because the between the, the time of price and work and getting work complete now is going to change dramatically. 
We've also changed the, the length of time as to when the project ends. It's up to June of 2023. So the qualifying conditions have changed also. The other thing is critical this time around is that in the past, everybody thought that some, some jobs didn't need planning permission. We can assure you that a lot of the minor stuff does require planning. And it, it, in the application form, it states that there's a lot of tick boxes required. They're not just tick boxes. We would, we would state to every, every group, do ensure that you have checked and check with your planning officer in your respective municipal district. Does the project you're talking about, does it require planning? You have plenty of time if it does to make sure you've got your planning permissions in place. It's no point in waiting until the last minute and suddenly find out, oh, we didn't realize the project we talked about or want to do requires planning. And coming back to us then in the last three months then, oh, suddenly what we want to do, we've got all our, we've got all our materials bought, but we, we can't complete the work because it now we've now been told by the planning department that we have to get plan permission. It's going to take us six months to get planning. That's not going to stand anymore because you've got plenty of lead in time to get your conditions, your planning conditions met. So do it at the outset. Don't leave it to the last six months to suddenly find out you need planning. You have the lead in time now to ensure that you, you meet them conditions. Meet all your statutory conditions at the start go and find out what you're planning to do does it need does what 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 your project is does it require what what does it require planning does it meet any other statutory conditions and ensure you've got that and also ensure that you have ownership and ownership of the site that you're you're planning to do the works on and have your permission got I talked to you before about, I said, how much funding is available. And Anne-Marie's already outlined that each project we're looking at is between five and 20,000. I'd also point out to you that you should also speak to the elected members in, your, in each of your municipal districts about what your project is and try and secure their support because in each municipal district, the list of, of applications will be coming back before the elected members to seek their approval and it will be with our support that the projects will be getting passed. So we will be we will be offering 100% funding to the projects that are approved for the works approved. So if your if your application is coming in, say at 20,000, and that that project is going before the municipal district for funding for selection, if the members are fully supported of it, and that gets the full grant then that will be getting the full 20,000. If the members agree that maybe 50% of the work's been approved in that project is gonna be funded, that means it may get only 10,000. So that's why I'm saying, do you talk to your elected members in your municipal district to ensure that they're fully supportive of the project that you're proposing? If the project is coming in at 10,000 funded and the members are fully, are fully behind it, are they only think that maybe only 50% of that project is, is what should be done, then it will maybe only get 5,000 support. That's where that's why we, we will fund whatever is whatever has been approved to 100 percent of what's been approved. But so that's why it's important to get your elected members supporting the project that just you're putting forward. The eligibility aspects of it. Eligibility incurred directly is all projects that are eligible, expenditure incurred directly relates to the project. The ineligible costs are ineligible for funding is unpaid expenditure, employment costs, marketing costs, day-to-day -day running costs, such as light heat insurance, expenditure paid by a person other than the grantee. And this is, this is very important to make sure that you do not get somebody to pay something out of their own pocket. That does not, that does not qualify. In general, the cost for items for resale are ineligible, except where they can be demonstrated that they will deliver significant tourism benefit. Activities which have been, are, which have been, are being granted by other public sources, except where their co-funded arrangements have been acknowledged and declared by the application, on the application. Travel and related costs are less expressly allowed in the letter of offer. Activities not specifically related to or required for the project 
and activities undertaken after the 30th of June of 2023. Anything that is recoverable under VAT and an in-kind contribution, again, is not eligible. Fines, penalty payments, legal costs, audit fees, financial cons consultation fees, and cash expenditure. So don't be paid for stuff in cash and saying that, oh, that, 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 that few pounds we spent there, you know, but there's, we, we don't know where we spent it. That doesn't cover either. Insurance evidence must be provided confirming the council's indemnified against all actions, proceedings, and costs. So in, in, if you, your project, if you have to ensure that the council is covered under the insurance. Successful that applicants will receive the letter of offer and the letter of offer forms the contract between the council and the group and will detail the conditions and the requirements set out in the letter of offer. Freedom of information, please ensure that none of the information supplied is sensitive and be aware that all, all the information supplied may be released in response to a freedom of information request. Now in relation to drawdown of funding under the scheme, it should be noted that the grant is a recruitment grant, so you have to pay the money out first for us to be able to reimburse you. So therefore the grant or the group, the organization must first, must first, first spend the money from their own resources. This has proved problematic last year for some groups in reclaiming the money. So I, I, would, I would definitely encourage groups to make sure that they have proper accounts and the proper account is in the name of the group, not an individual. And with the greatest intention in the world, some groups are not properly construct, constituted, I should say it. So you should ensure that you have a proper constituted account in the name of the group. And that should be either with the bank or with the credit union. And ensure that you have facilities to enable you to draw the monies down to pay a contractor to do the work and that when you get your receipts that you keep your receipts in the name of the group and not in the name of an individual and that's where i'm stating you before about payments out so that if you're making a payment out the name the payment is to the group and not to an individual so it's not with the greatest respect paddy joe paid for such and such a thing it's the name of the group paid to get works done and it's that and that the, the contractor has been paid back for the works done. That way you can track your payments going out and the claims can come back in. So when you have all your payments done, you can then make your submission for to, to draw your monies down. And we will try and ensure that we can get the payments back out to you and Martina will be dealing with, it, with all the payments coming going in, the claims coming in and the payments going back out. And we will deal with that as promptly and as efficiently as you can get your claims into us. So if you have any questions coming in there, we will we'll look at that. The checklist for documents to be attached with your application, if available and can be submitted by, submitted by email, is a copy of a detailed plan and costs of the project. And as I said to you, we know that change, things have changed dramatically with regards to costs. So it is, as we said, a broad outline of a cost. If you can get somebody to give you a cost as it is today, we know that cost is not going to stand in three months' time or six months' time. It will change, but you're going to have a rough idea as to where you're going to be in costs. Evidence of the ownership or written permission from the owner of the land. And in the application form, if it is land, we ask that you provide the folio number. So that way you can prove that you have the permission of the owner. Declaration of an application form must, of all works must be completed by June of 2023. Declaration on, on application form that all statutory and regulation obligations will be complied with. And that's where we state again that um, you have checked with the planning and all other departments that you are compliant and that you have checked to make sure that what your project is is meeting them regulations. And information submitted regarding all other funding secured are being sought in relation to the project. So if there's any questions, we'll try and deal with the questions, folks. And if we want, if you want, we'll go through the application form too.
but the application form is pretty straightforward. It, it takes you, the first you put down your, your municipal district, the applicant's group name, group address for correspondence, the R code, email address, telephone number, and contact name of the person in the group, a contact mobile number, the contacts position in the group, the project title, the project cost, project funding requested, <coughs> outline details of the project, site location, works required, nature and scope of the project and how it, how it is to be undertaken and attach all relevant documentation with this application. Uh, number two there, outline how the proposed work will be in, will enhance the tourism offer in, in your area. That's a critical question there. Number three then, the breakdown of the costs, and please provide as detailed as these you can. As, as we said, th this is to give an outline of the amount of money that's required. Four is the ownership permission. Please provide evidence of the ownership or written permission from the owner to undertake the proposed work, name and address and contact number of the owners and a folio number there also. Expected duration of the project time frame. expected duration of the project and confirm that can be delivered by the 30th of 6, 2023. And then statutory regulations and obligations confirm that they have, that the obligation will be adhered to. And have any other funding sources be for the project, please provide details of the funding sources received or being sought for the project. Has any other co-funding been sought? Any, any, any additional information, if there's relevant additional information you'd like to add to the application, please do so then. And then uh, section three, the declarations, understanding the guidelines, having read understanding the guideline criteria of the tourism grant. It's a competitive grant process displacement to existing businesses, accuracy of the information provided, legal obligations and the freedom of information, and then ensure that you sign in block letters on behalf of the organization and date it and submit the application then by email. That takes us to the end of that presentation so that we'll deal with the questions now then folks. Thanks very much, Barney. Thank you for that. that. That was very helpful. And I think what Barney's been kind of doing is Barney's been working on this scheme for the last 12 months. So um <coughs> kind of familiar with the the the, the do's and don'ts, if you like, and, and the kind of things that uh, groups are coming up against. So it's just about kind of highlighting them so that um we can make the process as smooth as possible. So a few questions are coming up in here. Eileen Burgess, Eileen's asking, guideline state employment cost is not covered. Uh, if we need to secure professionals, example architects, is this cost eligible? Yeah, so what we mean by employment cost is that um, the cost of employing staff uh, is not eligible uh, under the scheme. But I mean, if you're employing like a third party uh, firm, such as a firm of architects, that, that, that is an eligible cost um, under the scheme. So that wouldn't, we wouldn't consider that an employment cost. So that, that would be fairly straightforward. And then how long after the closing date will the decision be made and the letter of offer issued? Uh, the work we want to do has to be done in the summer. So our plan in relation to that is that they will, the, the, the final decision in relation to each of the grant applications will be, um, will be well, the decision will be made um, uh, by the elected members of the particular MD. So we are proposing that these decisions will be made at the July MD. So our timing is kind of focused towards that. So we're looking at the, the meetings are normally the, the second Tuesday of each month. So sort of like mid-July. So a decision will be made in mid-July and the letter of offer will be issued shortly after that. So hopefully hopefully by the end of July, uh, we'll be in a position to be issuing letters of offer. So it was a fairly quick turnaround time uh, in relation to the, the applications. And then the third question Eileen has is how will the assessments be carried out and is there a marking scheme so we know how to pitch the applications. So I think the applications, um, basically the, there, there is a criteria that's set out for the applications. It's not necessarily a marking scheme in that we, we don't necessarily um, weight each of the criteria. But what we do is um, 
I suppose that the, the, the various criteria that Barney has outlined there are the essential criteria. So, for example, um, you know, as, as have you got uh, authority from the landowner or do you own the land or do you have authority from the landowner to carry out the works? That'll be a yes or no. Things like, for, for example, as planning permission required and as uh, our plans underway to ensure that that planning permission can be secured in time. Uh, also then looking at how this will actually impact the appeal of the area from a tourism perspective. So that's the most important um, criteria from our perspective in terms of um, of, of the, the application. And again, as Barney said, the decision is made by the elected members. So, you know, it really is at their discretion in terms of, of the funding that's been put forward. So we do expect, like last year, we had about 70 applications and we were in a position to fund 29. So there, it is a very competitive process. So we would encourage you to put in really good applications. And the more work that you've done at the outset, um, and you know the confidence that we have that this project can be delivered, the better it is for your application. So that's really what we're looking for: very clear confidence that the project can be delivered. So that's good costings, as Barney mentioned. You know, evidence that costings are um, are in place, and providing the details around that as well, and details of the work as well that you want. Don't be vague about what you're looking to do. You no, know, put put in good details in terms of the the actual work that you're you're looking to undertake, and that helps us then measure the appeal that that will have. Uh, in terms of enhancing the appeal of the, the tourism uh, er, the tourism potential of your area. Okay, so the next question is from Mary Donyon. Mary's asking, can the invoices and receipts be submitted separately or, um, or are they to be submitted all together at the end? Uh, it, is a difficult, it is difficult for some groups um, as would not have a lot of money to pay out for the works. So yeah, Mary, this is something, and maybe Barney can talk to that. This is something we do come up uh, come up with. But look, the, the grant aid is what we call a recruitable grant. So that means that the expenditure has to be incurred first before the money can be paid out. So what we have been doing in some instances where groups have had difficulty, just as you've said there, Mary, in terms of um, accessing the funding to pay the invoices first. Um, and what, what we have been doing is we've been working with uh, credit unions um, and where basically they've agreed to offer a loan to the community group for for the for the basically the, the amount of the grant, uh, and then we agree to pay the the grant aid directly into the credit union account. So that's something that we've been doing uh, for the last scheme, and it's it's working quite well. So there are ways around that. So we can actually, if you can get a loan out of your from your bank or from the likes of there are no other uh, community funds as well available, uh, or the likes of the credit union that we can pay the money then directly into the credit union. So that, you know, there, there's a mandate then to do that. So that, that kind of works as well. But then the invoices have to be paid before the grants can be can be paid out. So that's, fortunately, there's, there's not much we can do around that. And Mary Doherty is asking, have you any examples of works already completed? And it's nice to see what has already been funded. I might just ask Barney to come in in relation to that, because we, we do have examples of the types of projects that have been funded. We have we there, there's a, a, a list of projects that we've already funded last year from uh, picnic areas to disabled access to um, there's there is there is a list of different there's walkways there's some work still on already on there's walkways disabled access uh, picnic areas um, uh, oh, there's a whole there is a raft there's a raft of them yet. Yeah. There is a raft of projects different goes uh, uh, right across the county from what people have done. Different different community groups have put in, so we we can we can put that out there. Yeah, we, we can put that up there. Yeah. Um. Thanks very much, Barney. Yeah. Yeah, so we've had a lot, a lot of funding. I'm just looking at, at the list here. So a lot of it is around kind of like even around signage, improving signage. A lot yeah. of it's been in areas where there's been, um, you know, we have these honey spots or these, you know, hidden gems like our waterfalls and stuff like that where, where there have been congestion and uh, issues like that. Uh, so a lot of it's like improving car parking, just that, not for brand new car parks, but just improve, improving car parking uh spaces improving approach roads to kind of various tourism areas um we've had um a lot of as barney said a lot of picnic facilities kind of looking at nice kind of public art pieces for picnic facilities as well using stone and different types of um um different types of products i suppose really just to enhance the area 
So a lot of it's small scale work, but work that really makes a huge difference to a local area, you know, in terms of its appeal, like, and, and, and also for the local community as well. So, um, so it's that type of kind of an, an, an improvement works. So you're asking Mary as well, can a group make two applications? There's nothing stopping you from making two applications, but it's very unlikely exactly. that you get two applications funded. Now, you know, just been, but there's nothing stopping you from making two applications, Mary. And then the second question, say picnic areas, and then for another, then another for something else. You could actually roll the the, the application, you know, pick the whole thing into one rather than putting in two separate applications. Um, the max funding is is twenty thousand euro, and the minimum is five thousand euro. So it gives you a bit of scope there um, to do it. So we I would recommend one application, but there's nothing really stopping you putting in two applications. But it's unlikely that you'd get two funded. That's great. Thank you. All right, Mary, thanks. Any other questions from anyone? Even just want to come on. Aileen's asking if a group stream stretches across more than one MD, would uh, those, uh, those would be assessed separately? Um, well, most community based groups don't really, um, don't really uh, straddle two or more MDs. You know, they're in one, but they're in one location or another, Aileen. So it's not something that, that comes up a lot. Um, but if it was a council service actually delivering the project and would straddle, we would, I suppose, from a, a from the council services perspective, we would encourage the council service to engage with the elected members from the various MDs to get support for the project. Um, so yeah, that, that that would be if we're looking at a council service that would that would span it, would span a number of different MDs. And Mary Dunyan, you're asking, will this scheme be available again in 2023 if we wanted to reapply then? It's, it's hard to know, Mary. Um, this money has um, has been made available as part of our budgetary process. So we, we only know from one year to the next. So it's not a multi-annual program. So we can't guarantee that it'll be available in 2023. Uh, but I can't say it won't either. Uh, but, the, but there's no guarantee that it will be available in, in, in 2023. It's, it's, it's agreed on an annual basis. And then our three quotes required from each supplier. Barney, do you want to just maybe take that? That's that. That was where we we did last year. We looked. We sought that last year. But again, we, we're we're conscious this year because of the 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 way the, way mar the market is that we're not looking to we're not looking to put groups under that pressure of looking for quotations that we know are not going to be valid that would be valid this week. But when you would go to purchase, their them quotes are going to be way crazy. But we would ask you to get your get your quotes in, and once the once they come in, that whatever your purchase is, what you're going to be paid for on the invoice. But you're, we know you're going to look for value for money. Hmm. Yeah, the, the whole idea for in quotes is about making sure you're getting good value for money. So if an auditor is looking at an application from our perspective, they'll they'll be asking, you know, how do we know that this group got good value for money? So it's about testing the market. So it might be even if you can get a quote from the web, you know, the internet as yeah. well, you know, just, just just so we can be clear that this is a reasonable cost. Yeah. Um, so a question from uh, Sinead uh, Bennett. Um, is the funding specific to outdoor works are digital or other types of tourism projects considered? Barney, do you want to take that? It's, it's that's a, that's an interesting one. Uh, if if the project if your project is something that's an indoor, Donegal Donegal is famous for that we don't have enough indoor tourist attractions. If your project is one that enhances the indoor offering, then that's something we we look at surely because it's it, it would add to it. But if if you can come up with a project that, that offers an indoor tourist attraction, then it, 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 it you 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 could have you, you could have something new in the can. So. That, that could that could add to it uh, but a lot of them a lot of them up to now has all been outdoors so if you if you've got something that nobody else has thought of then then you, you could be you could have a usp you could have a unique one okay thanks very much barney and and thanks need uh patrick geller is asking where lands are common age as permission uh from all from require as permission required sorry from all shareholders um, and the norm it would be, Barney, do you want to take that? Uh, that which always causes us a bit that, of a... That, that, that would be one where uh, if, it's, if it's a large commonage and it, the, what you're proposing is going to, going to involve them, yes, you would, you would require the commonage owners 
to be in agreement because all you need is one or two of them to turn around and say their permission wasn't sought or wasn't granted and they could object to you. So you would need the commonage, commonage owner's consent. So you'd be best getting them all to be in agreement, uh, especially if it's going to be an access issue uh, because uh, from previous experience, you're, be you're better getting everybody's on, on site rather than finding out afterwards that what you're proposing to do, some of them are not in agreement. And that could be done relatively easily by calling the meeting with all of them and saying, this is what you're proposing and are they in agreement or not? Because rather than giving yourself grief halfway down the road, just get, get, get the consensus and get people to sign off at the start. Okay, thanks very much, Barney. Um, I think we've kind of covered all the questions here in the chat function. So I'm just wondering, does anyone else have any other questions or are you happy with, sorry, Heidi, yeah, do you want to come in Hi. there? Yeah, I'm very sorry I came into this late because I tried several times to get in. So my apologies, I haven't heard anything. So if I ask any questions that seem silly, I'm sorry. Um, the caravan and camping park out the back here that is um, owned by the council and managed by the council, um, what we would like to see would be some more signage and obviously now um, I'm, we're thinking that possibly could that be looked at under the tourism related grant because obviously the enhancement for the visitor experience and the people visiting the area, um, you know, is paramount with the, the, how many people that we're getting here for the motorhome. So I suppose a quick question to Barney is, um, you know, because this is council owned at the back there, um, is that a possible that we could have a, a look at maybe applying for something that we even know it's um, a tourism related visitor experience car park area, but we are within close proximity as exploring and showing. Is that a conversation or is that not? Uh, that's an interesting one, Heidi. <laughs> That would have to be a, a that would have to be a discussion point. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Thanks. That's that. It's it's just obviously it's very topical with us being so busy here. So thank you very much, Barney. Thanks. I suppose maybe just Heidi on that one as well. There there will be the caravan and camping funding uh, applications. There will be a call for applications from community based uh facilities um in the next number of weeks we currently have a call for applications open for businesses um so um so that might be something that can be considered uh, in, in relation to that but i don't know the detail of what your what your proposal is heidi so maybe once we, we know further detail in relation to that that might be something that could be considered under that that uh, fund yeah um i think there's there's two things probably a meeting if possible we can request um, because there's two things that I've identified, one for tourism related grant and one for, it was in the papers, I have read the papers apparently to say that it was going to be, um, the caravan and camping may be extended to, to community voluntary sectors, um, you know, so that might be something a community organisation, at the moment I know that it's reeled out to businesses only, with private businesses. Um, so I think there's two things um, that I, I have concerns about that I think that it would be beneficial for both the council and for um, the local community tourism office here. So maybe if we could just minute it that um, I'm requesting a meeting as soon as possible um, for avenues on that, that would be lovely. Thank you very much. That's great, Heidi. Thanks very much. You can get in contact with Barney directly just in relation to that, Heidi. So uh, I'm going to follow up on, on that. Thanks very much. Any other questions from anyone? Or are you have you got all the information you need now on a Monday morning? Time for a coffee. <laughs> Oh, like that's great folks we're, we are available as well if anyone has any other questions maybe after this call you know just uh, give martina a call i think martina's contact details at the tourism works 2022 goes directly to martina so martina will be able to give you you know to give you any information as well that you're looking for so councillor crossan sorry Anne marie i was having bother getting on as well just under the particular meeting just but i just listened to heidi they were talking like I would be a great advocate of the, the caravan uh, or overnight stays and, and the one at the back of the tourist office in Montana is fairly busy. Um, I was always wondering if it had been a great fundraiser for the tourist office itself that if they were able to sell the tokens on it and, and it's like kind of a bone of contention myself that they don't 
um, that you have to go across the road to, to um, get a token to get into the, the campsite. Now I was past it there the last day and there was nine camper vans on it and I thought it was a, bit, a good funding if that would be uh, possible for, for them to sell sell the tokens for it and to retain the money for it. Just was wondering if that's possible. Thanks, Emily. Okay, thanks, Councillor Crossham. It could be certainly something that we can we can uh, and we are going to be looking at all the air to services that the council provides. So it will probably be something that will be considered just in in, in relation to that uh, as part of the wider carbon and camping strategy that, that that we have at the minute. So, um, but thanks for your comments. We'll we'll, we'll certainly take that on board. Okay, folks, um, are we, well, are we happy now? As I said, any other questions, just lift the, send us an email or lift the phone um, to Martina or to Barney or to myself, and we'll do our very best to, to help you. Uh, and we're looking forward to getting your applications in for funding and um, and to continue to, to do the good work that we've been able to do under this fund over the last 12 months. So, um, so thanks very much, everyone. And, um, Again, uh, look forward to getting the applications in. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.